Okay. So we put this class together because we just want to make sure that there's consistency around our shaves. Um, and I think if we follow these steps, we'll come closer to ensuring that everyone is following the same consistent process, procedures, uh, with regard to the client experience, which also includes the closest shave as possible. You only get as close as possible. Not all skin types are identical. Some skin types are more sensitive. Um, and it, it's really up to you to determine as a professional how you're going to approach the shave. Some might require a lot more moisturizer. Some might require less. Some might require more hot towel. Uh, and also communication is key. If you're going to tell a client I'm going to shave you and he walks away feeling a little stubble, you have to kind of explain, as I have on multiple occasions, when Greg would explain to me why the client's walking away feeling a little stubble. Sometimes it's not healthy to shave the client against the grain because the skin is too sensitive. But it's important for you to explain to the client that your skin is too sensitive. We have to work our way up with a straight razor. We have to work our way up to get your skin acclimated to a stray razor so that when you walk out, you're not bleeding when we do against the grain. So Greg will walk through how to communicate to a client, how to set the expectations, all the steps he takes to ensure the closest shave possible within the time allotted, which is 30 minutes. We found that 30 minutes is enough time. We've been doing this long enough to know that you know, if we needed more time to get a closer shave, we would extend it to 40 minutes and charge appropriately. But we feel 30 minutes is enough. It's gonna include multiple hot towels, a cold towel, multiple iterations of the, uh, the skin prep, which includes the pre-shave, the shave cream, the towels, the aftershave, and then the cold towel. So Greg's gonna walk through it, pay attention to how he uses his technique with the hands and the strokes. So uh, hopefully you'll get something out of this class and we'll, we would really appreciate your feedback. Before we leave today, actually, I would love to get a sense of the tools that each of you uses for, um, for, for cutting. I would love to know if you use any particular uh, brand of scissors or brand of razors or brand of everything because we're looking, we'll be looking for sponsorship, I'll be honest with you, we'll be looking for sponsorship. I'm talking to Parker, I'm talking to some other brands to offer some kind of sponsorship but that means that all of us would be using the same brand. So we'll be more talk about that later. Okay? Let's get going on this. How's my coffee and bagels? Did I do the job? It was my first time making bagels. Okay, any questions? Does anyone uh, expect to get anything else out of this class? That's why I wore a black shirt. I'll make sure. All right, Greg. All right. So why don't we maybe move, move some of these chairs in? You don't have to all stand. Let's move some of these chairs in, sit down. This would be, and, and any time during the process, if you feel like raising your hand and asking a question, please feel free, okay? Come on, let's bring some more chairs in. Greg, I had an ingrown hair here, which I loved it. picking care of the other day. Perfect. So, the first thing, guys, when you lay your client back, even before draping them, you want to make sure that the headrest isn't at the top of their head. The goal for the headrest is to be somewhere where, from where it is now, and even possibly ask the client to sit up a little higher. The goal is for the headrest to be able to bend their head back so that you have full access to the underneath the neck area. Okay. So do you recline the chair with the clients on the yes. chair? Yes, okay. yes. It was reclined today for your camera. Yeah. 
So typically you would sit your client down, I you let them, you put the headrest in, you let them know that you're going to recline them. Once you get them into position, lock the chair so that it's not moving on you. That's the last thing you need with a razor in your hand. Okay? Just so. Alright, so during the drape process, we have three striped towels. You lay the towels on your client. You tuck the towel under the collar and back around to the neck. That way, any shaving cream that you're going to be using doesn't have any contact with their clothes. And the reason you double up on the layers is so that the shaving cream, when you wipe, does not ever touch their clothes as well. All right? Uh, if you were going to be trimming their beard first, I use the apron. I typically don't leave the apron during the shave because it gets a little hot underneath. Uh, that's a personal preference. As long as if you are using the apron, the apron's not touching anywhere on their neck. This is your sanitized area. You don't really want anything there that could have any other bacteria on it. Okay. Once they're draped, you want to make sure you wash your hands. You don't really want to be putting your hands all over their face if you're not sanitized properly. Okay? So before you start at all, you kind of expect to look through their face and see for ingrown hairs like this spot here or any other areas. You're also looking for the direction of the growth. In his case, he has a couple swirls here which means in order for me to stay with the grain, I'm only gonna be shaving down until his jawline. And that's where the swirls start and change upward, okay? The goal is until you know the client and you've shaved them a few times, you don't know how their face is gonna react. If their face, and you're shaving them with the grain, you're less likely to irritate them, okay? If you shave against the grain, even though you're not cutting the client, you can see little circular spots that are starting to bleed, those are actual pores. The reason they're bleeding is because you irritated them when you went against the grain. That will never happen if you go with the grain. Now, a lot of times with the grain might not be smooth enough, so you do with the grain and then you go back across the grain, but not against the grain. If you shave your client on a weekly basis after a few months, you could probably go across the grain or against the grain without any irritation. All right? So step one of our moisturizer, we're using the tea tree. You grab maybe a nickel's worth on your hand, warm it up a little bit, and then you spread it all over their face. You want to get under the nose, under the lip, try to avoid putting it in their mouth. If you do, it's not the end of the world. You grab your clean towel, wipe their lip a little bit, and you're back in business. The first layer of shaving cream is from the lather machine, so it's the warm lather. When you're applying the shaving cream, you always want to do the circular motion so that you're lifting the hair and getting the shaving cream underneath the hair. Uh, if I was doing a beard trim, I would use a towel on their eyes. The hot towel is going to be closing their eyes. so. It, this way the hot towel actually gets to their eyes and it's a little bit more relaxing. Don't forget this is just the first layer. All you're doing right now is moistening the hair and softening the skin so that you can get a closer shave. When you get into the upper lip area you use your finger to bend the brush. It's a little bit more accurate and that way you're not putting the lather into their nose or mouth. Once you get the first layer down, you get your first hot towel. Okay, you use about top two inches of the towel. You fold it down under their nose and up over their eyes. Then you take the bottoms. You want to make sure that their neckline is still covered and getting heat their eyes, this is a part of the relaxing portion of the shave. 
So if I had the other strip of towel here, their face isn't really going to be getting it. This way they get to actually relax. You always want to make sure that this portion is not covering their nostrils so they could breathe, but you still want to get the mustache nice and warm because that's going to be one of the toughest spots on their face. While they're under the hot towel, you fill a jug with hot water. You pour almost the whole thing out on your brush. It washes the brush with the hot water. You go ahead and put in a new blade into your razor. That gives them about a minute and a half under the hot towel. Once you're organized, take the towel and you use the inside of the towel to wipe off any shaving cream that you may have had on their face. Your second layer is going to be the Geno's pre-shave oil. Same thing, maybe a quarter size amount in the palm of your hand. You spread the oil everywhere. Once again, make sure you're getting under their nostrils. And don't be shy, you're lifting the hair. The goal is to get under the hair onto the skin. Greg, how long uh, would the hair need to be uh, for you to use a trimmer first? If the hair is over a quarter inch long, I recommend knocking it down. It is better for the hair to be about this length because I can, when I'm shaving it, under the follicles. If it's too short, I'm just going over the hair. Right now, because of the length of the hair, yeah. I can actually get under the hair and it's gonna be a closer shave. Okay, so now you're applying the second layer of lather from the dispenser. On top of the pre-shave oil. This is all in preparation of the shave. For the round two of the hot towel, you grab two towels. The first towel, you do exactly what you did with the last one, a couple inches under. Fold over the eyes, fold back over, make sure everything's covered. Now you use your second hot towel to make sure that this towel stays nice and hot. So just a quick fold. You make sure the client's okay. Yes. The first one is the just with the shaving cream and the tea tree. The yes. second one is with the pre-shave oil and lather. While they're cooking, you take your hot water, you wash off your brush, give it a couple shakes. The amount of water left in the brush and an empty mug, you take one pump of Gino's shaving cream into the middle of your brush, you beat it like an egg. You can see it starts getting foamy. That's all you're looking for, okay? That one pump is enough to shave them three times. So you never need more than that. While you were doing that, he has been under the towel for probably two minutes. You take the top towel, fold it again. This towel never touched anything except for the top of a towel. You fold it so you know this is the towel you used. You put it back in your warmer. You're gonna come back to that towel after the shave, okay? We wipe off all the remaining lather. Now we're applying the Geno's shaving cream that we hand mixed to their face. You can see how much foam you have, it's plenty.
Once again, it's okay if you get a little bit of shaving cream on them. Come in with your fingertip, give it a wipe. You grab your razor. The first thing you do is you always want to check to make sure your blade's nice and straight. Everything's locked into place, so there's no surprises. Okay? You turn their head and you follow the grain with your strokes. So when you start with the shave, you always use your other thumb to stretch the skin. The tighter the skin, the closer the shave. If there's loose skin, the razor bounces and that's how you end up cutting your client. So you create a flat surface. While you start, you tell your client if at any point you feel something not smooth, please let me know. Otherwise, it should be like butter. Shave pretty much to the jawline because that's where we said it changes direction. Don't be shy to stretch their skin. They appreciate it, you appreciate it. It makes everybody's job a little easier. You could kind of use your thumb, glide up against the grain and you could still see there's still a little bit of stubble there. So what you're going to do when you go back for your second follow through, we'll shave across the grain and it's going to eliminate any little bit of stubble that could be left. So make sure when you do the lip, you still stretch. You stretch it away, stretch their nose away, whatever you need to do to give yourself a flat surface. So Greg, what do you do if they don't have that much lip space? Because he has a pretty So sometimes if ball. you see for him, in order for me to get up under his nostril, I'm gonna to have to ask the same thing, which is what to answer your question if they didn't have a big lip. And that is when you get to that point, you ask them to tuck their lip. The same way they would at home if they were shaving. Like mm -hmm. um, so can you tuck your lip please? See by doing that, that immediately exposes this whole section. So you put your finger in the area that you've already shaved, you stretch it out, you get right there, and don't forget, you still have to stay at the same 45 degrees on the skin. Now something you have to remember, if they try to help you all the time, you have a moving target. If they move, it could cut them. So you have to ask them to move. As soon as you're done, you let them know you can relax now. Yeah. And that's it. You don't want them to help you too much. And you could feel, if it's tugging, it might need a little bit more hot towel. We can always go back to that because you're not done yet. See the hairs growing up here? Yeah. You could feel it start fighting the razor. So you don't want to shave yeah. down. So you come back above the person, stretch down, and then shave up. See these hairs are still growing down, so mm -hmm. I stop there. Mm 
See, this is a pour. That's because I reached the point of where it changed direction. I didn't actually cut them, and that's no big deal. It's just an open pour. And that's because of that swirl he had. You can't really shave them in a circle. Nice tugging. Starting to feel like a tug, so the client could tell you if you don't feel it, usually they feel it a little bit before you. In this case, it's just due to prepping because it's a brand new blade. There's no way it dulled already. Okay? What's tugging means? Sorry. It's starting to feel like it's pulling the hair. It doesn't feel like butter anymore. Uh, the client should never feel what you're doing. It should be pretty relaxing the whole time. Is there, like, do you need to, like, re Space or so what you would do is you're going to reapply either way to this side because this side starts drying out. Mm -hmm. Okay. You take your lather and your brush. You beat it just for a second again. And then you see how much you have again. It's completely full of foam again. So is it okay to keep the cup in the warmer? Yes, it is, yeah. A lot of times it won't fit, but that's why I use the boiling hot water because the mug's going to stay warm. Where can we get a boiling water? From the water machine in the back. Pull in? Mm -mm. Is it your first time shaving me? <laughs> Second. Is it? Mm -hmm. Why are you nervous? I think, I think you fantasize about a blade at my throat before. Well, I'm waiting for the demo to be done so I could actually do what I fantasize. Tourniquet? Mm -hmm. What if I'm not comfortable with cutting? Because I'm short, so I can't come back around a lot of times with my client's face. I usually stay on that side. That's okay, right? So, in school, they teach you to actually never go past 12 o'clock. Right. So, on this side, I'm supposed to be doing backhand. Right. For me, personally, I'd rather get up close and personal and always use my forehand. So, it's easier for me to do that. If, it's, if because you're shorter, you would drop the client lower so that you could reach comfortably. If you're doing it from this side always, it, these hairs here are gonna be against the grain to start. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you see, they're growing in that direction. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming around this way, and I'm still coming with the grain. Because when I was in school, my instructor told me, you want some license? If I need to go on that side, I can because you do it, whatever more comfortable I want to, to you. do to exactly. make sure I don't cut the client. That's correct. The number one objective is not cutting the client. The second objective is, is getting as close as possible during your shave so that they experience what they came here to get. Right. Worrying about backhand, that's more a matter of your license. Uh, you try to do whatever you're going to need to do it's no different than telling you to do clipper over comb but you feel more comfortable doing scissors over comb or whatever the goal is for them to get the exact experience that they wanted and the final outcome that they wanted so you're coming back in your direction with the lift this time correct
that hair still soft? Yes. Because I reapplied more lather, so it's going to keep it warm. Okay. Through here is a little coarse, so we're not going to come back and get that area until after the last hot towel. I, on an average Saturday, do five shades. And you see, all around the chin, I'm constantly stretching and creating a smooth surface. You don't want to push up against their jawbone. You're creating your smooth surface yourself with your other hand. You should never really need to apply too much pressure. And you could feel it. As soon as you start reaching the point where the hair changes direction, it's going to show you the razor immediately starts feeling like it's starting to get close to plucking rather than cutting because yeah. you're supposed to glide. If you feel that, you stop. You find the direction that the hair needs to go and then you go back and get it. If you feel like it's a little dry, it's no big deal. You still have enough to do a whole nother face, no problem. All the troubled areas, every time you apply, you apply into those areas again. The more you apply, the softer the hair and the skin's gonna be, the closer the shave's gonna be. So because I applied here, it's very difficult to stretch. Yeah. It's kind of slimy now from the shaving cream. It's no big deal. Don't be scared to wipe some off if you need to. You can either use the back of your razor just to create some clean surface. You see how I stretch that and it becomes one smooth surface with one stroke. If you see something like this, where it's an imperfection on his face, whether it be an ingrown or a zit or whatnot, try not to go over it because it's a little higher. It's good, it will make it bleed again because you're going to take that new scab off. So you shave up to it, all around it. You still get all the hair. There's no irritation. You always only use the tip of your razor, the head. Uh, if you're trying to pinpoint, it's easier to use the front tip. Uh, otherwise, you want to use the whole blade during your strokes. See, starting to get some irritation here. No big deal. If you need to use the septic powder, you would grab the septic powder and a Q-tip. And then this thing. Got a bleeder. And you know that you didn't cut him because the blade's flat. If I cut him, it would be a line, like a paper cut. It's never going to be just a dot. But this tells you not to go against their grain because their skin's already too sensitive. So while you do that, you explain to them, your skin's starting to show me that you're getting a little irritated from the straight razor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some septic powder to make sure it's clean and sanitized. You just apply it wherever you see it. It's not a big deal whatsoever. Make sure you never re-dip your Q-tip into the san the sanitize. It's only a one-time use. That's why you use the Q-tip. Okay? And don't use the fingers, some guys. 
All right, so as you can tell, all I did is apply it a little bit and it's immediately gone because it wasn't really a cut, it was just irritation. Mm -hmm. If for any reason you get some shaving cream and a little blood like this on your towel, don't just put your towel into the dirty bin, rinse it with some cold water and it'll be gone. If not, it gets hot water on it, it's locked in forever. Question, since he said don't use your finger, I thought technically we weren't supposed to be using lather brushes. Technically, you are not supposed to be using lather brushes. That's why this video is more for in-house, the way that we shave. The reason they tell you not to use the lather brushes is because of multiple people, as well as if I did use my lather brush on top of an area that was open, now I'm contaminating it. So when we apply the lather and we're using that same brush when you, for everybody. When you're applying the lather before you've started shaving, there are no open pores or anything. You're just putting the lather no different than on the back of the neck. So okay. you can use your hand to apply. For me personally, I get a lot better of a reaction for the hair and the skin if I use the, the brush. So now that I've reapplied, I'm gonna come back, get his neckline again. When you get around the Adam's apple, you do not shave the actual Adam's apple without moving it away from the Adam's apple. You go right up to it. Then you could come back and stretch it away from the Adam's apple. You ever have them swallow while you're over there? Yes, and <laughs> typically that's the time they really want to or have a story to tell you as soon as you're at the jugular. See, he's got a swirl here like I was telling you in the beginning. So you really have to fight to see where the hair wants you to go. See, I was able to do the whole swirl with no issues. See, the whole Adam's apple area is now almost shaved, except I have right on it, right? I stretch that skin over and away. And then I do the same from the other side. Over and away. Adam's apple's completely shaved and I never shaved over it. Same thing that we did when we got under his nose, we're gonna do for his bottom lip area. And I'm gonna ask the client for a little help. He'll tuck it. You almost have to go against the grain in this area, otherwise you're gonna get into the cleft portion of his chin. So you wanna go real gentle and you wanna see what, the, what it allows you to do. And the blade you used was the Astra? I'm using a feather, but typically I would use an Astra. Would you say that different people have different experiences with blades, or would you say it's how they're using it? Typically it's how you use it, but there are differences. For instance, a feather is very sharp. But because it's so sharp, it's extra thin and it loses the sharpness fast. Um, and Astra is a good in the middle because it's sharper than a derby. But it's not as thin as the feather. So you could easily get a whole shave without starting to pull. Because I could feel it starting to pull right now on his lip. Mm -hmm. The Astra is sharper than a derby platinum? I think, I feel like they are. And they hold the sharpness longer. So I'm going to get about 90% of his shave done at this point. I have a few troubled spots here and here. That's where it's the coarsest. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the jawline.
And in this case, you can see an ingrown right here. You just wanna let them know you have an ingrown right here. See it under the skin? Mm -hmm. So for me personally, I usually take them out for the client. Some clients don't like that. Some people appreciate it. So you would break the skin slightly and just pull that guy out. He's ready. You can see the whole, you see how long it is under the skin? Right here. All right, so everything's done except for the troubled spots. You lather one more time. And now the hot towel that you had, that you saved from the beginning, is nice and hot again. Now you can apply it to his face. So this is the area that you're worried about, so you want to make sure it's getting nice and hot in that area, okay? If it's Gino's warmer, most people probably stop breathing for a second. We keep for zero. Yeah, all the way down. All right, so we're, we're almost done. What we're gonna do after just this little bit, you're gonna feel the face. You start prepping it for post-shave. So that's when you start with the aftershave, then you do a little powder, and I'll show you all of those steps. But you want him to sit under for at least that extra minute. Right so now, so far, we've been shaving for maybe 12 minutes, 13 minutes. You usually just throw that towel right on like that, or is it just... I because? shake it out a little bit okay. uh, so it's not too hot. Uh, typically, the, like the warmer that I'm used to working wouldn't get that hot. Mm -hmm. And the warmers we have in Buckhead don't even have a thermostat, so they're always the same temperature. Okay. Did you shave a whole face, or you left some... I still have under the yeah. lip and the, mu the middle of the mustache. Everything else is shaved. Okay. okay. How do I look? Like Hitler. Like Hitler. And Charlie Chat. Okay. And in this area, you're going to go up down? Or yes. you're going to go sideways? Yeah. Bless you. Not diagonal. Okay, so I use my thumb in the dry area. Both sides are pretty much done. You see how far I can stretch that out? I come right under his nostril. It's whatever's comfortable for you to be able to reach. Everybody's face is a little different. So sometimes you might have to do this. Sometimes you might have to lift it. Whatever you have to do to get there. You see, I can't come in like this because I'm gonna cut him at 90 degrees. You have to be at 45. So you stretch it and move it and then you come. They're very sensitive and very tight. And the hair is hard. And the hair is very coarse. That's probably the coarsest portion of their whole face. So if you can't get just those little bits, that's going to be your electric follow through that you're going to be doing and you're going to explain to the customer why. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask if we can do the electric trimmer. See, when I use the electric trimmer, you should literally hear maybe a couple of times, not yeah. the whole shave. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> Getting a few stragglers is okay. Doing the whole shave with the electric defeats the purpose. I wouldn't need a blade if that was the case. Is that too much skin irritation as well? Where? No, I'm saying if you go back with the electric shaver all over the face. Not if you prep it properly. Okay. I promise you they would rather you move their whole face than cut them. So if they have a lot of nose hair, what would you use? Electric trimmer? If they have the nose hair? Yeah. yeah. Go in with the trimmer and then just vacuum it off their face because it's going to fall all on their lip.
part right here. I'm always scared I'm going to cut it a little. The top lip, like the razor slips. If the razor slips, you're going to cut them anywhere. <laughs> you never want the razor slipping. Let's do a very small stroke. All right. See how that just slid right over? I mean, it hasn't happened yet, but it's, it's a concern. <laughs> See, nice and smooth. And this is all that's left right here. See, he's got the hair in the corner. The only way I'm going to get that is by straightening it out. And then you start right at the side of the lip so that you're already not worried about the lip. See, he's got some hairs growing here on the lip. Same thing, straighten out the lip. Just so slightly, and it's gone. <clears throat> done. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> you feel their face. You can still feel a little bit of stubble, but it's 95% smooth. Okay? So what you're going to do... You do less than a dime's worth of the aftershave, okay? If you do too much, it's going to make the electric follow-through not work as well. So the goal is to moisturize their face. It also, because it's aftershave, you're closing the pores. Because you don't want to put the electric follow-through on all the open pores, that's what's going to irritate your face. So I put it on here. If you feel his face, it's moist, but it's not wet from the aftershave, okay? Then you take a little bit of powder, put it into your neck brush, duster brush. You knock it all over their face. Okay. All right, now you do the electric follow through and you explain to the client, you have a couple areas like here and here that I wasn't able to get as close without irritating your skin. I'm gonna do an electric follow through to give you the same effect without irritating your face. That way you can actually enjoy it. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to touch it. Okay. And I don't hear anything. You don't want to go a hundred times in the same area. You just want to go over it, make sure you get, I can still feel a little more here. You kind of go over it. Don't forget, just because you got their face extra smooth, doesn't mean they could touch it now because you beat them up with the shaver. The goal is for it to be a happy medium. All right, you feel around. Give it another feel. Okay, now you're ready for the cold towel to actually close the pores. You let the client know, I'll be right back, I'm gonna get your cold towel. You're bleeding all Was it relaxing experience? Very, with all the eyes on me. That's relaxing. So, with the cold towel, don't forget the purpose of the cold towel is to close the pores, not to freeze the person. Okay? So, I usually fold it like this, almost like a triangle. I can get up under the nose again. You don't have to cover their eyes again. It's not relaxing to have ice cold on your eyes. You push it, okay? You're not rubbing up and down. You're pressing. You get the whole face. You flip it over and do it again. Get the whole face. Close those pores. Yeah, you'll, you'll know. As soon as it, you feel like you got it all, it's all good. The goal is to scare those pores into closing, okay? The next step, you grab a striped towel. 
you lay it across her chest. You spray them down with the Osage rub. It's an alcohol-based aftershave. You let them know to keep their mouth closed, eyes closed. I don't have any okay. of it. So once once you spray them, you fan them off. No, good, the best way is go to the Dollar Tree, get a mini spray bottle for a dollar. I have one. That's all you need. The right. itemizer is over 50 stuff. years old. That's Osage Rub. Okay. The green okay. Osage okay. Rub. Yeah. You just put it in a different. Uh, different Correct. Okay. So you fan them off. Once they're fanned off, it doesn't take very long because it's alcohol based. You're just making sure that it's dry. Then you go back. about a third of the powder that I put on there. Mine has a hole that's a little different. So you knock the powder back on their face. The goal is for them not to look like Casper. Knock a little bit into your hands because your hands aren't very smooth, okay? You put them in your hands a little bit and then you do their face massage, okay? When you're doing their face massage, you're also feeling for any stubble that you may have missed. When I do the